Okay, so we're just gonna go in here and see how many suns I can make real quick. I'm gonna go over here to our crystals. Unequip battle, equip create. Mm. I need to fix that. <laughs> I have two twelves. I'll have to, I'll have to upgrade that later. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I want to go. Actually, I don't know if I really care all that much. It's bugging me a tiny bit, but. Uh, the difference between 21 and 22 ain't such a big deal. All right. Okay. Do it. How many suns can we make off of this heap of divinity? So I'm I'm doing everything uh everything I can to get as much divinity as possible. I've stopped crystals for now. Um I'm messing around a tiny bit with monuments and other things. Um, just, uh, just different stuff. I basically just... One of my goals, as you know, is to get to P-Ball 10 this run, so... Uh, I think I might actually push my efforts towards that. Uh, take a little break on mine. It depends. I want to see how far I can get. I know I needed... I believe it was 250 suns, was it? To make my first universe. So I want to know. I want to know. Can you show me? We've got 300 average. So. 21. How big a, ch how big a bite is this going to take? I mean, I could do all the math on a piece of paper with a pen, but... Bah! It's easier just to run this for a minute. Come on. Just a little more. A little more. Okay. Oh, crap. I see. 170. All right. I see. At this rate, it would take me about, I think I could do it in two and a half days. I, I bumped my Divinity Generator up again, by the way. Just gonna mention that real quick. Um, yeah, I could do this in two and a half days at this rate. Hmm. 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 I really want the discounts. I want to do the solar system of the galaxy and all right now, but, you know, just make one of each and then spend them upgrading my planet. But I also want that enormous discount. And this, yeah, this would be expensive. I would end up having to spend 10, 50 suns, use up 50 of my suns to make one galaxy. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that just yet. Come on. Okay. Thump. Right. Right. Well, I'm a fifth of the way there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna temporarily up my building speed again. Because that's a thing I can just turn on and off at my whims. And I'm gonna be all like, uh. Well. that. There. Yeah, it'll make things take a little bit long. Well, I mean, you know, things will slow down a little bit, but hey, I'll kill another another pea ball here. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what we'll go with. Okay, so I'm just going to work up my monuments a bit. I'm going to knock out a pretty or two. Uh, I should be pretty close to... I am actually should be able to knock this one out. Um, well, I mean, not with a physical crystal in my slot. I'll have to throw that out for the battle one, but should be able to take one more right now. But the one after that... Wow. I could also knock out a couple more UBs and get a higher multiplier. Hmm. I could do a lot of things. I'm already... Hmm. I want it now. Anyway, next time we'll read the story. <laughs> next time. Which is to say, in like, for you, five seconds. Well, we've just about done it. Okay, I left it running at one point and ended up with a surplus of moons, quite a bit more than I intended. But aside from that, things went pretty smoothly. At this point, all I need is a lot of suns. So, I think I have enough. Why aren't you making suns? Hey, game. Game. Oh, there it goes. What was that about? <laughs> Is it? Am I crazy? Was it moving the whole time? It looked like it was stuck. I was like, what was... Anyway, I must be just going crazy. Never mind my madness. Never, ne never mind. Let's look around at a few other things. I have experimented with every type of crystal now. As well as leveling them up, which creates multiple ones at a time. You get upgrade percentages um, based on how many you have of a type. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details. The thing is, I got them all, and every single kind of crystal is useful. I'm honestly shocked. I thought for certain that there would be crystal types that I'd just be like, that's stupid, I don't need that. But turns out every single crystal is useful. Uh, but the most important one is the ultimate crystal. I mean, obviously... Uh, okay, unless you count the G, the God Crystals, which I haven't experimented too far with. <sighs> Seven and a half hours per GP at level one. Leveling it up further would, of course, make it better, but it is actually really... It, it takes, it, it's actually the hardest one to level, for obvious reasons. And it's kind of hard for me to balance that against the others. So I'm going to set that one aside for the moment. Ultimate, I, 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 it really is all the others put together, so I don't need to talk about that one particularly. But we come to these four. Creation is really good, not just because of the speed here, uh, getting 22 at once is quite an improvement in creation speed, but also because it gives you a discount. Um, pretty much I'll just be always be pairing one with the ultimate. In this case, I'm trying to get the big discount on Divinity Cost. The Battle Crystal boosts the Divinity Generator's production, so I pretty much keep that on all the time by default, um, unless I'm specifically creating things at the discount. The Mystic one is amazing, because it makes my clones take less damage when finding ultimate beings, and well, more on that. This one is highly useful when I'm fighting those. <clears throat> I don't really do the defender thing at all yet, um, so I don't see a reason to have it equipped except when I'm actually striking. And these are build speed, which is really freaking good. So there, every single type is useful. I can only equip two at a time. I haven't given them $9 to... Uh, Wait, no, that's not it. That's not... Oh, here it is. Crystal equip slot. Right. Uh, yeah. Adds one more slot. Uh, you can have up to... Well, you can have up to all six, which would be incredible, but yeah, I haven't... I would say that of all the things that can be purchased, this is by far the best. 
okay, that's my estimation. Maybe other people would think that other things would be better. But um, to me, of all the stuff I've seen, I'm convinced that this is the best one. So, what I've generally been doing is I've just been cycling. I've been having this and cycling the others. Um, this one, I would love to have this equipped perpetually, but I don't know. It also takes, it only takes 10 minutes to make one. Uh, if I, as I get further along, I have a feeling that my opinions on some of these are going to change as, as my capacity to manufacture them is increased. I find more than anything, more than anything, I want more clones. <clears throat> I want a higher clone count right now. I'm not sure if that's optimal. Okay, it's probably not optimal, but I really want them. Uh, it would help immensely with building crystals. It would help immensely with uh, fighting these things. Now, let's talk about these for a moment, shall we? So, I can knock this one out pretty easy. This one takes two swings, even, even using the uh, crystal. Don't you have enough to buy this? Uh oh. I'm not weak. I need. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. Fine. Whatever. I have everything else I need. Okay, watch this. When I get what I need, I'm going to hit. Hold on. I'm going to put this over here. I'm real close. So, when I get to 138 suns, which is really freaking close. I have almost enough for the next batch. I'll only need one more batch after that. I built everything else because I have the 1,375 planets. I have the 14 Earth-like planets. Then 22 solar systems is 5 galaxies is one universe. Now I'll need an extra solar system and galaxy, one of each, for upgrading my planet. And I've decided I'm definitely doing that right now. So, yeah. I will easily be able to pick up one solar system and galaxy. Unfortunately, the monument requires 25 galaxies, so I'm not touching that at this time. Now, this is a short campaign, but I'm going to tell you what I've what I didn't fully appreciate was how much divinity the divinity campaign can bring back. In fact, if I had to do this over from the start, I could do it a lot faster. I would level them up a lot more. I wouldn't mess around with any of the other campaigns. I just level the crap out of them and then throw them at divinity campaigns. Um now the other thing going on is we can try to take out the printy ball, but I know I can't yet. I know I'm not there. But whatever, you know, might as well take the shot. It doesn't cost anything, not really. Oh, I was going to show smacking this. Um, yeah, sure, whatever. So when I hit these, not only does it give the percentage, but uh, one of the things that uh, I've forgotten, you get GP. You slowly get GP out of it, and I have been milking the GP. Um, so, getting good at that is just getting free GP. I, I want to kind of spend it, but I also don't want to spend it. I don't know if that makes any sense. All right, but enough. This is what not what you were here for. Oh, wait, right, we're going to take one shot. One shot first, real quick. Er, full power. It's not gonna work. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna work. Huh. Huh. Crap. <sighs> My attack should actually be high enough to hurt him, but it isn't. 
can see the zeros there. Ah, oh, I should be able to hurt him. His defense is less than half of what my attack is, but he's not being hurt. Hmm. Something I'm not accounting for. No matter. I'm not too concerned because I haven't really been focused on beating P-Ball 10 right now. Uh, I can do that on the next rebirth. Easy. Easy, easy. Um, I just want to get this first universe. I want it. I want it. Just, I just want it, okay? <laughs> I don't need a reason. I don't need a reason. Okay, so now, what we all... What we all really play this game for. The plot. Preparations for Warfield. Alright, let's see what we got here. Year 9051. March! Planet Warfield. The name alone of Freya's planet sounded dangerous. Warfield! Even before visiting, I knew how risky it was to go there. I could feel it. I was sure this would become my most dangerous journey yet. What about when you almost got burned by Hephaestus? You did, did, did. What? What? <laughs> I was sure. I could already sense the battle driven environment here, where only the strongest would survive. It would have been suicide to go there without good preparation. Wait, we prepare for things? This is why I went back to fortitude to better ready myself. I had need for a new, better monument. The Temple of God. My seventh and last monument. Last? Last? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you sure? Absolutely positive. Is that last? Okay, it's the last one. Uh, yep. Absolutely you know, you should keep making up new kinds of monuments to become stronger. You should come up with a dozen more kinds. It would really help. Lazy. It was also my biggest monument. An enormous temple surrounded with a beautiful garden, cherry trees, and, and a big fountain with fish. Yes, yes, instead of water, the fountain will just spew out fish. It'll be beautiful. Sorry, I was, was getting into character a little too much there. She's been alone for a long time. <laughs> She's getting a little weird, okay? <laughs> to get prepared for it, I would first need more divinity. To buy millions of stones and plenty of light, plants, trees, water, and fish. The salamanders were easy to fight now, but... From them and the monsters before, it would have taken me too long to get enough divinity for my tastes. The salamanders alone gave me more divinity than all previous monsters combined. It had always been that way. A stronger monster would give me twice as much divinity than the strongest monster I fought before. With twice as much divinity, I could have enough for my new temple twice as fast. If each one is doubled, you actually, from the new monster, not quite, well, yeah, no, it's actually not doubling, it's more like a, anyway, it's kind of like you end up with, with one plus two, then you end up with, you know, then the next one's a four, but four is not twice as much as three, and then the four, the next one after that is an eight, but eight is not twice as much as seven. I'm trying to think of the name. Is it the Pythagorean Theorem? Shit, I think that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's Pythagorean Theorem. Anyway. So, just letting you know, your math's off, lady. <laughs> and so I searched for another monster I hadn't fought before. After search, well, actually, twice as fast. Actually, she's not too far off. It would be twice as much as the total amount of divinity she's gaining before, more or less, give or take. I guess maybe she's more right than she's wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I should stop trying to do math at 3 a.m. 
And so, I searched for another monster I hadn't fought before. After searching for a while, I found moving stones, big ones at that, rocks which formed human-like shapes, but much larger. They were at least five meters high. Yeah, yeah, I fought a lot of those in Breath of the Wild. Pain in the ass. Especially the ones that are on fire or ice. I named them golems. I was still far away, so they didn't take notice of me yet. I then summoned a few hundred shadow clones to move out and fight them. To fight one of them, ten of my shadow clones attacked from all angles. They used a combination of whirling foot kicks, shadow fists, and dragon punches. They all hit the golem at the same time and vanished, in just the same way as when they could would take major damage. Upon further analysis, before my clones hit the golem, it released a shiny aura. It seemed to be similar to my own reflection barrier. Well, the golems were able to reflect incoming attacks, causing major damage to their opponents without taking any damage themselves. Just like any new monster I'd fought before, they seemed to be much stronger than all previous ones. So, nothing new to me. At least I was sure they would give me a lot of divinity after defeating them. It was only a matter of time until my clones were able to do so. Attacking them head-on was a no-go for now, so I had my clones try out some aura balls. Just like their punches, the fireballs reflected and caused them to become at least twice as fast. My clones barely dodged them, and the golems took no damage at all. It seemed like I had to think of a way to deactivate their barrier before my clones could attack them. With, an in with it intact, I could see no way to defeat them. Or you could just smash it really, really, really hard and penetrate the barrier. Didn't the last one you fought... Wait, am I mixing things up? No, wait, maybe your reflection barrier has never been cracked. Or was it? I don't remember. Did it happen? I tried to come up... I tried to come up with some ideas to counter the barrier, and for some reason, I remembered hypnosis from far back in my own universe. Let's hypnotize rocks! My mind doesn't work that way. Would have never occurred to me. There were still books about it in my space dimension device, which I had started to call Space Dim from then on. Hmm, Space Dim. What an odd name. Wherever did that come from? I searched for and read them. Yes, I can be cheeky. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this would work at all, but the golems had eyes. They do? Oh, you didn't mention that before. I guess you did say they were human-shaped, so... Okay. So they were able to notice my hypnosis attempts. Along with my godly powers, it should have been much more effective than if a normal human would try it out. Then I had my shadow clones try it against each other. Nothing happened for the first day, but on the second day I was able to see slight improvements. The hypnosis from one clone was able to prevent another from moving for a split second. That was just what I needed to stop the golems from activating the barrier. On the third day I split up my clones, commanding some of them to train their hypnosis against each other, and the rest to try it out on the golems. While the golems were paying attention to my clones, none were able to successfully hypnotize them for a whole week. Well, the golems were not aggressive. Unlike the monsters I had fought before, they didn't attack my clones. Maybe they were so confident in their barrier that they felt no threat at all from my clones. On the other hand, I could see some progress on, on my clones who trained amongst themselves. With a few minutes of staring at each other, some clones were able to stop each other with hypnosis. After two more weeks of training hypnosis, I could see some slight progress. It still took my clones minutes to stop each other with hypnosis, so at first glance it seemed like they hadn't progressed at all. Then, one clone was finally able to hypnotize a golem for a split second. This implied that they had progressed just fine, but not when attempting to hypnotize each other, probably because their resistance to hypnosis grew at the same rate as their ability power. Because no clone had tried to hypnotize a golem up till then, they had no resistance to it. 
because no clone had tried to hypnotize a golem up till then. On the third day, I split my clones, commanding some of them to train their hypnosis against one another and the rest to try it on golems. I'm telling you, it's not good for her head. All this weird stuff she's been doing, splitting her soul apart, rebirthing herself, is... Yeah. She's getting into hypnosis. She might actually be edging towards psychological therapy. That, that might be what's driving her subconsciously. Now, she just needs to re keep reading these books, and then her clones can begin working on each other. Or maybe that's kind of the source of the problem to begin with, all the cloning and all the experiences she's having. Splitting yourself up 10,000 times and hanging out for a day means that you just live 10,000 days. In worth when all those memories grow back in your head all at once it's a lot of experiences to experience at once only one out of 10,000 of my clones was successful though and it took them more than 10 hours of constantly staring into the golem's eyes this meant hypnosis was quite useless against any other enemy also it only stopped them for a split second and the clones failed to attack within that time because they were so focused on the hypnosis. It still made me happy that it worked at all, however, which meant I could use it as a valid strategy against them after some other training. First of all, teamwork. One clone hypnotizing and the other clone waiting for the opportunity. Second, second thing. You know, you can... Practice your hypnosis on salamanders, apes, fighting turtles, mummies. Well, maybe not the mummies so much. Uh, no, that's more like fighting bandages. Orcs, harpies. you got plenty of things you could go back and practice hypnotize on at the same time, you know. Just saying. Just a saying. Hey, you guys. Give me my divinity. It's something. I'll still need more, however. More. More, I say. I'm just gonna throw some food at you. There. And I'm going to stick you in for... Let me see. Yeah, that seems about right. Yeah. Yeah, that times it about right. There'll be like a half hour or so. That it'll be over before I get up. Maybe more. Eh. 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 Guessing exactly when I'll wake up is more more art than science. Despite my attempts to force myself into a strict schedule. <laughs> never never quite holds. Mostly because I foolishly stay up late playing video games and streaming when I really, really shouldn't. Let's stay up and continue this. Only one out of... Yes, I read that. My clones stopped hypnotizing each other and all of them moved to the golems, which made them progress faster after their first small success. Does it really make them progress faster than working on each other? Also, are you sure you don't need a shit ton of resistance to hypnosis? Because, I don't know, what if you got into a fight against the god of hypnotism next? Now, about once a day, a clone was able to stop a golem for a split second. It st still took them two more weeks until the first clone was able to hit a golem within the short time frame. Even without his barrier, the stone skin was hard to breach, so this one hit was by far not enough to kill the golem, but there was visible damage from those hits. I'm curious what kind of stone they're made out of, because you were punching your way through mountains. Time went on. My clones trained hard, and about a month later, my clones finally were able to kill their first golem! Just like I had thought before fighting them, they gave me about twice as much divinity as salamanders, but it took about a hundred times as much effort to do so. At least I could fight them additionally to salamanders, so it was still a gain. When you finish that, that temple, oh, just wait till you get your hands on that generator. You're gonna love it! 
The fight against the golems took more time than I had hoped, so the divinity gain from them was negligible. But the divinity from the other monsters that my clones fought at the same time summed up to quite a bit. In the end, I had enough to buy the creations I needed to make my for my new temple. So I visited the gods and sold them, who sold them to buy everything I needed. It took a while to visit them all, but two weeks later, I was finally ready to go back to Fortitude. Hey, that's two weeks your clones were running around training against golems. The golems don't fight back, so why not? It was time to start my new project. The temple itself was first. It was supposed to be huge and magnificent. So my clones needed to dig giant holes and fill them with stones to create a strong and solid foundation. After this was done, they constructed the pillars and the rest of the building. That was easily said, but not so easily achieved. For a foundation, I would suggest just finding solid bedrock and using that as a foundation, but hey, you dig a hole and just throw rocks into it. I guess that works too. A few weeks later, the basic structure was finished, but it didn't look as good as I had wanted it to. Decorating it afterwards took them even longer than building it, but it was also very important. The temple of a god had to be beautiful after all. When the temple itself was finished, they went on to create a worthy landscape garden around it. One of the main features was a large and beautiful fountain. This used up a lot of plants, water, and fish, but it was worth it. I just... I, 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 when, with this, I wanted to make a L'Oreal commercial joke, but I, with, I held it in. I held it in, but it was worth it. Because you're worth it. Yes. Just, I just, mm, this is, just, okay, moving on. I just, no, all right. I will, I will raise the quality of my humor. I will not go for the obvious ones. I, I don't know how to humor at a higher plane, but I will find a way. Ah. <laughs> After it was finished, I looked at it from afar, and it was a spectacular view. I also felt the new power from it surging within me. But although it was the big biggest singular power boost yet, it was less than my other monuments combined. I wondered if this was enough to beat Freya. Nope, you gotta upgrade it. To make sure I was ready, I first wanted to build more monuments. But because successful, successive monuments had to be bigger, more expensive than the previous ones, it would have taken a long time. Building another of every monument would have delayed my fight against Freya by almost a year. Or you could rebirth, and then build the extra monuments, and then fight Freya. No, you don't care about safety. <laughs> After thinking about it for a while, I came to the conclusion that rebirthing would increase my power more than building all the monuments again. Ho ho! Yes! For once! Good! On top of that, it would be faster than one whole year. Although it meant building my beautiful temple was a waste, but Warfield felt so dangerous that I didn't want to risk going there without enough preparations. When I thought about rebirthing, it also came to my attention how it was my biggest weakness. Even though the other gods didn't remember me anymore after I rebirthed, there were a lot of there were monsters and a lot of dangers everywhere. It would be best to do it only when it was safe to do so. But the past had shown me that this may not be possible every time. This time, at least, I first went back to Zeppelin for my rebirth. On the way, I also pondered about how to make rebirthing less hazardous in the future. The first goal when rebirthing was always to go back to Space Dim, then to fly to Zeppelin and level up again. When I trained with my clones, I always had to wait until I reached Zeppelin before I could fight before I before I could have fought monsters with my clones. Space Dim is a large vessel, and there is enough space to carry quite a lot of monsters at all times. So when I arrived in Zeppelin, I carried a few hundred of the monsters onto Space Dim. They were my starting boost for the next time I would rebirth. Also, you should take your clones, 160,000 ought to do, and have them all study everything 
for a few years. Just wipe them out periodically so all the knowledge goes to your head. When you know how to build your own space dim, then you should build a spare space dim. Though not out of stuff you create, because that stuff all disappears when you rebirth. It'd be good, because space dim might be really good, but, you know, one of these days, some angry god is just going to smash it. And then you won't know how to fix it. <laughs> is, is, is a second great weakness you have. Actually, it might also be a. You, you might. You're probably going to think of it as a crutch, and then you're probably going to find a way to travel between worlds without it. That's probably what's going to happen, isn't it? Calling it now! <laughs> the monsters didn't really want to go in there. I mean, come on, the other gods travel from world to world somehow. Unless Hermes just stuffs them in a bag of holding and does all the flying. These monsters didn't really want to go in there, but it wasn't so hard for my shadow clones to convince them to do so. Hey! Hey, slime! I want you to go in space, Dim! I don't wanna! Ah, oh, what can I do to convince the slime? Ah, uh, it's warm and, um, fragrant! Okay, I'm not very hard to convince. What do you think we were gonna do? Throw the slimes in a sack? That would be that would be inhumane and monstrous. No. We don't want to do something like that. We just want to kill them. I mean be nice hosts and humane about this. Just showing them some high tech devices and video games wasn't enough to persuade them. They're slimes. <laughs> But after one of my shadow clones killed off 2,000 of the monsters within a minute, they somehow became much more agreeable. Humane. Even happy to join my space dim. Of course, they didn't know that they would be killed anyway after my next rebirth, but until it was time for that, they were free to do as they wanted, at least within the area I prepared for them. I also kept a few clones from that time on space dim to watch over the monsters, and a few more to be ready for my teleport and rebirth when I needed it. Then I trained my teleport a bit more so I'd be able to use it in a really weakened state so I could teleport to Space Dim even when almost dead if I found myself in that situation again. Where I was forced to rebirth at a near death state, I would first teleport to Space Dim where everything was prepared for my rebirth. I still plan to rebirth before or after fights with other gods when there was no risk, but it was better to be ready for the worst. After my preparations were finished, I tried it out for real. I fought against a few of my clones and let myself become wounded. I teleported to Space Dim in a wounded state. I was able to do it, but it didn't work out too well, so I trained this for a few days. It wasn't easy training. I was wounded the whole time, but it was necessary to get it right. I also was on Zeppelin, where there wasn't anything that could hurt me, even in such a state. So while the training wasn't my favorite, it did not involve any risk. Except for the risk of infection. What? Slimes are probably made out of germs or something. I don't know. What do slimes like to breed in? <laughs> Zeppelin might not be the most sanitary planet. Hyperion might not be the most sanitary god. Who is the god of sanitation, anyway? I'm guessing... Rivers? So... Nephthys? I'm calling you the god... I'm adding, I'm adding sanitation to your portfolio. Just like some of these others have, you know, forests and hunts and a ton of different titles. You're getting sanitation added to yours. Almost a week later, I thought it was, a good, it was good enough, and I rebirthed for real. It had been a while since my last rebirth, so I was sure to become stronger afterwards. I knew that I had to power up enough to be at least as strong as in my last life, or I would become weaker in my next rebirth, so rebirthing numerous times in a row would make me very weak. This was also a reason why I had to set up rebirth at Space Dim, where there was no risk after I had my new body. If I would somehow be forced to rebirth again with my newly created body, I might end up just as weak as I was at the beginning. 
Even the thought made me shudder. <laughs> oh, just you wait. Just you wait. Anyway. Well, I still would have kept my experience and a few things I didn't lose after rebirthing. And there wouldn't have been a totally new start, but still something I really wanted to prevent. After everything was done. Sorry, just checking something real quick. Sorry about that. Where was I? Oh, yes. If everything was done, I defeated all the previous gods once more until Eros was down. I also recreated all my monuments again. Did you try to learn any new things from some of the more, um, like the forest lady? She had been kind of, uh, kind of a jerk to you and you hadn't really learned anything from her. Maybe, maybe now that you were more powerful, you could, I don't know, chat with her a bit more? Fighting the golems was easy now. But even with that, my divinity income was relatively low. Building the monuments would still take a long time. I really had to think of some other way to increase my divinity gain and to improve the monuments without building more of them. But for now, I wanted to go to Warfield. I had been preparing for it long enough. Every time I see Warfield, it makes me think of General Warfield from from Wings of Liberty. I loved that character, and I was so sad in Heart of the Swarm. Uh, oh, right. Spoilers. Sorry. For those who didn't watch me play StarCraft II a lot. <laughs> and I didn't want to delay it any longer. Freya was stronger than all the gods I had previously fought, so I intended to ask for a way to improve my monuments after defeating her. Weaker gods didn't know of a way to become stronger than other gods, after all, so it made the most sense to ask the strongest god I could defeat. So it made sense to ask the strongest god I could defeat. Hey, Eros! Eros! Hey, uh, you know how to improve monuments? Because you're the strongest god I can defeat. She always looks forward and never backwards. I went to Space Dim and then flew off to Warfield. Eros had shown me the exact direction, so it was easy to find. When I arrived at Warfield, I noticed a volcano erupting. Lots of ashes were flying about and visibility was really bad. Whoops! You landed on the wrong planet. That's not Warfield at all. That's the world that Mistborn takes place on. I wish I could remember the name of the world. It doesn't come up very often in the actual novels. You have to get outside into all the expanded universe to get the names of the different planets that you're on. Lots of ashes were flying around and visibility was really bad. On the ground, there was lava flowing everywhere with no space to land space dim. This also wasn't the only volcano. When I flew around searching for a landing place, all I could see was either volcanoes or ocean. This went on for an hour until finally I found an island amidst the ocean. It had a, was a beautiful, green and beautiful landscape. So I landed there. Freya, I didn't know you were the volcano goddess. Huh. And here I thought Hephaestus had volcanoes in his portfolio. My mistake. But as soon as I stepped one foot out of space, Dim, someone called out to me. Hey, who do you think you are? This place is sacred. Only the winner of the war games can stay on this island. Then I asked him, uh, what are the war games? These are games where the gods have to create an army of fighters. Then the armies will fight each other, with the god being the one to command them. It is a battle royale, so all participants will fight at the same time. When all but one are defeated, the god who commands the last standing armor army will be the winner and receive this island, the most beautiful area on this planet. The war games will start in three days, so if you want to participate and win this island, just come back in three days with your army at that island over there, said the god while pointing in the direction where the island was. Which god? Who are we talking to? Also, we can make an army of shadow clones. Actually, I only want to challenge Freya to a fight. Do you know where she is? Oh, so you want to challenge my daughter? <laughs> well, you can do that. But she probably won't even talk to you unless you win the war games first. Now get off this island. If your device is still on this island in one minute, I will destroy it. What'd I tell you? 
You're lucky he's so patient. If it had been some of the previous people you fought, they might have just smashed it straight off. Space Dim was a really durable spaceship and wouldn't be destroyed easily, but I feared that a god like Freya's father would smash into a million pieces with a single punch. I flew back to space as fast as I could. When I talked to Freya's father, I was really overwhelmed. I felt his aura alone would crush me if I'd stayed there much longer. Even when talking to him, I felt like he could kill me at any time. So I was relieved he didn't attack me, but he seemed to have a calm nature. Who wouldn't attack anyone unless they would oppose him or go against his orders. Okay. Let's pause for a moment now and go over to our creating and scroll down to our sons. Up. Oh. Oh, we got it. Got it. Now, I need 137.5 more than I have right now. Okay, I need about 60k more. All right. Well, this won't come in for a while. Maybe I should have just gone with a short run. It shouldn't even take all that much longer. Well, on the other hand... Ah! Smashing UBs. These do, in fact, grant divinity. But they're dead. Why are they dead? Doggone it. Fine. I could do the thing with the special and the fight gods, but honestly, that doesn't give as much divinity as, as... It's not such a big deal. Unfortunately. I could... burn my remaining lucky draws in hopes that I get big boosts of divinity out of them. Oh, no. I honest... I mean, I kind of want to save them, but then again, I might get lucky and get something really cool. Like a pet token. Someone in my Discord has managed to pull two different pet tokens out of these. I would love that. You know what? They're mine. And I feel like opening them. I don't even care. I'm just going to rip them open. Yay, my mystic is doubled. Two mighty food. Okay. Five mighty food. Yay. An hour of divinity. Give me five hours of divinity. Well, I mean, you know, GP is GP. Um, a mystic bonus is nice. Um, it's, it's good, I guess. I'm happy that my pets got some food. Yeah, okay, I'm disappointed. I didn't get a single awesome. I just got some stuff. Fine, whatever. Um, pff, so be it, game. Be it. Anyway, we did make a bunch of divinity, however, which is what we were. Uh, put those there. I don't know what they were doing there. So what we were really after. So let's go ahead and buy Max. Close, close. Uh, I need about thirty k more. I got two hours worth during that. So that tells me, shit. I'm not going to be able to get all the suns I need until the morning. Until I collect from this. Probably. Oh, well. We still have the war games and Freya herself. And as much as I want to tear into this and read more, I probably should save them. I should probably save the next part. And celebrate my son or my, my first universe after getting some sleep because it's late. Okay, anyway, ah. Uh, it's all pretty good. The other thing I'm thinking about is the Tourney Ball. 
I don't think I really need all of these here, which means I can reallocate them. Unfortunately, these are expensive. This would be the ideal way to build up to the printing ball. At this point, the crystals... Oh, oh right, I didn't talk about how this worked. So, at level 1, you need 30,000 working. When you've upped it to level 4, you can put 120,000 in. It always takes 10 minutes, but this will generate 4 level 1 crystals simultaneously. I'd need 900 energy to upgrade it to make 5 simultaneous. Unfortunately, this is 50,000. <laughs> these are just 10,000 per level. So these are way easier to make. And like I said, I would love to pull... You know, pet tokens would be nice, but I'd love to pull an extra crystal out of one of those lucky draws. That would be a find. Being able to equip an extra crystal could be a huge boon. And you can kind of see from the levels. Be aware, I pushed a ton on Ultimate Crystal, but they don't upgrade well. They just don't upgrade very well. See, this is a 71% efficiency right now, whereas this is a 34% when it's the same number of the same level. And that tells you a lot about what it takes to upgrade them. <sighs> Even getting this up to 8 was a pain. Each each one is just just way harder than the previous one, obviously. Orders of magnitude more difficult. Well, okay, maybe not quite that hard, but still difficult. And I've still got this thing. I'm really tempted. I have a thousand six hundred and fifty six planets. takes one planet, it makes one poison planet. Hmm. I only need 18 more suns. Maybe I'll need more later, but I could cut that down. I'd get a smaller discount, but maybe... I just want a peek at this. Anyway, what am I going to do with the rest of these clones? For now, I'm just going to put them here. For the moment. Give them something to do. Okay. So. Take a planet. We make it toxic. I could leave this running. I certainly have enough moons. You lose 55 point... Sabeel creating every... Oh, okay, I see. This is how slow it is. So, if I ask to fight you, you need at least 50% of yours and at least 100,000 clones, but I don't want to! I don't wanna! Not really. This thing's gonna kick my ass. I just want to examine it. Dodge chance, counter chance. Recovers negative 20 energy. Energy. Oh, it's kind of like when I fight fight um, over here in the special fights, only, only it seems to be more. Um. Okay. All right, let's see. I don't get time manipulation. Shoot. That's bad. All right. So if I call a reflection barrier. Oh, oh that's heartening. 0% <laughs> damage. Stats are actually different on these. Hmm. Sixty-five percent chance to counter the next attack only, though. All right. 
Hmm. Godspeed. Well, okay then. Yep. That's all right. Okay. All dead. No surprise. Uh, yeah. So, poison planets. Yay. Should have fed it one of those right off the bat. Shouldn't have waited. Shouldn't have messed around with the other skills. Okay, well, let's just take a little time to build this back up. All right, let's say we wanted 18 suns. <clears throat> we need 117. That is not so far out. Then I can do it all. Then I can do it all. I just need that little bit. So I'm gonna put that there. Go over here. I'm gonna unequip this and equip this. I guess I'll put them back on this. Maybe I will even fight a few of these. I'll do one real quick right now so we can see. It's not going to be much. Also, it takes a while to get through them now. I mentioned before, I use these two because they have 100% chances of hitting. And then I simply click on high kicks manually. Uh, it's got a 75% chance of hitting and a very fast cooldown, so it's, it's pretty effective. Pretty effective way to smash these. <clears throat> Come on. Get through them. Okay. So. Basically half an average. Between the two of them in each cycle. Now, how much does that actually get me? How much can I buy? Hmm. Let's me buy about one knot week. All right. And I need. Oh crap! I'm down to ten. Whoops. Ah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is doable. This is doable. I continue pushing this up. So, you know what? I'm gonna stay up just a little. Because I think I'm very close to getting that universe. After that... Oh, they gave me mighty food. I can't waste that. So I guess I'll let it run through the night after that. And I'll just have them building monuments. Um, you know, monument upgrades and things are good. They let me um, rebirth bigger. Maybe I'll even kill P-Ball 10. Who knows? But I'm getting that freaking universe tonight. Eh, let's up you a little more. Yeah, it's not very balanced, but killing clones is what counts in the statistics page. So I want to kill as many of them as possible. Murder them all. Genocide of the Shadow Clowns. Anyway. Okay. Unequipping battle. Equipping creation. Eighteen. Gotcha. Do it. All right. All right. All week. Before that, I was thinking about this even before. Uh, even before my big, big dumb challenge over here. I was thinking about this even then. But much more after I finished it. 
If I had to do over again, I'd have probably done a couple more day pet challenges first, and I already talked about what I do different about the pets themselves. Maybe pushed this up to P10. I recommend taking down at least P10 so that you have another pet, and your generator will do a little more. Maybe push the generator a little couple of notches higher as well. Ah, oh, well. I'm so happy I'm gonna get it. Ah! Come on! Faster! Fast! Doesn't it take three and a half minutes? Oh. I mean, I guess it would. Uh. But then we make the solar systems and the galaxies and the universes. Well, universe. Fuck me. Ah! I can find things to keep myself occupied for a couple of minutes. Should probably buy some more. Oh, never mind. Spent myself out. It's fine. Is fine. Well, there's a few different things I can mess around with. Um, while we wait on this. We can do this. Pew pew. All right. Let's suck at this. I mean, um, do a la a amazing because cause I am the smups, smups king, don't you know? You guys watch me watch me do my shmup streams all the time, yes? I, I have been thinking about doing a Toho one. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway... <laughs> I'm terrible at smups. Um, God, actually, I kind of want to dig out Gradius. I had the original Gradius on the NES as one of my games growing up. That and 1943 Battle of Midway was it. That was it. I didn't really get any more shmups. In fact, I thought the genre had died <laughs> for many years. I thought it was just that thing that you saw in arcades. And then, then I got into indie games. And I was like, holy shit! They brought the genre back. And it's amazing! Actually, if you want, uh, Tyrion 2000 is freeware. And is really good. It gets a little silly towards the end. Which is, in some ways, a bit of a shame. Because it had been kind of a... I don't know, I was enjoying their big crazy sci-fi world and all of the logs and stuff that you'd find. Ah, Hold on, let's see how we're doing on our sons. Come on! Obviously, I'm better at the boss fights on this. I don't want to have so much trouble with this. It's just a game of dodge. Okay, my hitbox is enormous for smups. Normally you get this little bitty teeny tiny thing. Well, actually, there's not really a normal. It varies heavily from game to game. Tyrion 2000, I was just talking about, you get enormous hitboxes. But you get loads and loads of shields. Oh, man, I just get around that. Um, I mean, there's a ton of subgenres and, a, like, a shit ton that somebody who is more familiar with the genre might say. But to me... There's one great divide in smups. One absolutely enormous one that dwarfs all other divides. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's just my opinion anyway, so probably not. You guess my opinion! Let's play Guess Hadrix's Opinion! Okay, uh, so... The ones designed for arcades and the ones designed to be played at home. Now, the difference that I see between them... <laughs> we're done. We're done. We're done. Come on, we're done! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, ten minutes. Yeah, okay. Well. You know, I built my creating speed way the heck up, you know. This one will take not really all that much longer, actually. Hmm. 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 Okay. 
yeah, just. Okay. Bing. Okay. If I leave it running like this, it'll run through the night, and no, it won't. No, it won't, because it's set to make 22 at once. It'll get stuck. Ah! ah. I'm not getting this tonight. I have to come back tomorrow morning, because the time need is an hour and 40 minutes. I should have looked at that before it started. Anyway. The difference between arcade and home should be pretty obvious. The arcade games want to eat all your quarters, and the ones designed for home are meant for you to play through them and beat them. Uh, but it's a little more complicated than that. See, the early games on, you know, the early early ones to hit consoles like Space Invaders and uh, Galaga were just straight ports from the arcade games, obviously. and because the genre had been developed for arcades, it had heavy arcade leanings for years. But you play a game like Tyrion 2000 and you feel this was made to play at home. It's built around the idea that you can save and you can advance through the game and buy upgrades and you have tons of hit points. Because the arcade games ain't going to give you hit points. Oh no, sir. <laughs> They want, to ki they want to fill the screen with colorful bullets and make you feel really powerful and eat your quarters. Eat them. Uh, so they make you super fragile. But, uh, you know, and that to me is the great divide in shmups. And you get a game, you get a game like Xenofighters, where it feels like it's, it's modeled after the arcade thing. Uh, or you play something like Toho, Bullet Hells is a fairly strong subgenre. A little, you know, you could say that it leans a little more towards the arcade side than, say, you know, some of the others. But I think it's really built for people playing at home. Uh, they give you the itty bitty, teeny tiny hitboxes that eventually became kind of standard among that kind of game. Whereas, um, you know, instead of your entire spaceship being vulnerable. Uh, where anything touching it is just instant death anywhere. Um, and the fact that bullet hell games often give you a fairly generous number of lives and continues. Um, but these are just my opinions, and uh, you can look at the divides any way you want. Personally, I find cute em ups to be. It's not really a subgenre, that's more like a tag. That's a descriptor. You could take anything and cute it up. <laughs> but I digress. Um, God, I want this. I want you. I have the resources. But if I don't specify that you are to build five galaxies, you'll get stuck. Tomorrow I have to wait an hour and a half, more than an hour and a half. But what's going to happen is I'm going to turn this on, and then I'm going to start streaming, and then I'm going to be out, and then I'm going to. Uh, other than no matter how am I going to do it so that I can actually be on the moment it hits? I want to be there the moment I get it. Well, at least I can say one really good thing about this. I don't need anything else. That means that all of this divinity is mine to spend any way I please because I've already got everything I need for the universe. As long as I don't consume a bunch of suns and planets. Shouldn't be too hard. So you know, this allows me to consume a sun or a planet, so the rest of my stuff I can put into these. Now I could take a discount by creating a whole bunch of weather and continents and nations, but eh, I'm just going to do this. Okay, there we go. Good. Every hour you can do some more. I'm just going to do it like this. Screw it. I'll just do it like that. There. 
Well, okay, maybe this is a little overzealous. I want to make some of these temples too. I don't know. Give me a few of those back. Give me a few of those back. Give me a lot of those back. I must be out of my mind. But uh, just leaving these building up their numbers is, of course, good. It's good for you. It's good for you to have lots of monuments, even if they don't do anything. So maybe a few more of these. And by tomorrow, when I collect this, I will have an enormous amount, and I can put all of it onto upgrading these. Once I clear this, I can swap this out for the... Should I go with the Divinity Crystal or the Building Up Speed Crystal? By which I'm in Physical or Battle. I think Building Speed, actually. I think Building Speed. Since most of the Divinity is going to end up coming out of this anyway. Yeah. Hmm. But... I do get to do at least one thing tonight. <laughs> I really wish this upgrade did more than just unlock the next uh, the next monster to come by and harass my crystal farm. Hmm. I really, my goal is really going to be get to get this clone count up. I really, really, really want more clones. Ah, oh, I've already mentioned that, but I do, like, really want more clones. You can increase the multiplier faster. Okay, yeah, that's the only thing it did, which is not something I really make much use of. But if I had a lot more clones, maybe I would power surge more. It's going to be nice when fighting these things. Enormously nice when fighting these things. It would in turn help me get more GP out of it. And it's even nice when I'm building up my might and my skill. Well, okay, it doesn't really matter for my skills at this point. But it would be nice when building up my might. Um, and, um, you know, building crap. Maybe not as good as just raw building speed, but still good when building things. So, yeah. Clones, clones, clones. Okay, you done yet? Oh, come on. It crawls. Oh! I don't have the 300% boost! I've been playing active entirely too much lately. What have I done? Ah, uh, the 300% boost would re reduce this to just half an hour, give or take. That is way more doable. Hmm. When I get this load in here, I'll have to make sure that I produce... Let's see. I'll have to make one, one more. Oh yeah, if I set this to five. Oh crap. Something just occurred to me that might be a little, little troublesome. I might have to make a decision. Well, I am going to have to make a decision. Let's see. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do, 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 do. Faster, faster. I said, don't I have you set to 60 frames per second. I know I do. Uh, call that 60 frames a second, what you were showing me there a second ago. Okay. Five. Would eat all 22, right? Because I did exact, and then give me exactly one universe. That's, yeah. Okay. But there's a problem. I want to spend one of them over here. Right now. Of course, will later result in me needing to make another son. Ten sons. It's not that big a deal. Not that big a deal at all. It just means I have to go through the timer bar filling up on a son. 
set to 10, and then a server bar in a solar system. And I suppose I'll want to make an extra galaxy as well, so maybe we make that 5, so that's 50, so that's... Nah, 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 nah. Anyway. Though I might regret this in the morning. I really want... Let me set this up someplace nice and safe. Make rocks for me. I really want to do this now! Yes! A beautiful planet! Oh, well that's nice. A living sun? Did we just put our planet in orbit around a living sun? What is wrong with us? Well, then again, their um, idea of sol her, her idea of a solar system involves ten suns. You know, I understand one sun. That makes sense. I understand two stars orbiting each other in binary. Or, you know, you could, you could, you could, you could do, you could do three, three, but ten, ten stars orbiting each other? Just, you're just showing off at that point. You're just showing off at that point. So, living sun. A mis a mystic being. His origin is unknown. He once flew to a sun and touched it with his naked hands. Instead of being burned, he absorbed all the heat and made it his own. Dark Phoenix Saga? X-Men? Hmm. Oh, I need that. Oh, I need that. Oh, I can't possibly fight that. Not without a crap ton of ball points, and even then... Well, we might give it a shot later. After I beat you! Alright, how do we want to do this? I can't set this to 5 because you won't be able to afford it. Well, I mean, if at some point you could afford it, you throw the monuments off. Then again... If... You were able to get yourself those ten suns. Maybe. Oh, wait, I'm going to turn you off anyway, and you don't create things when you're turned off anyway. What am I thinking? And I could just buy the ones rather than waiting for the bars to fill. Of course. Because of course I could. I'll have enough divinity. I can be wasteful. So yeah, I know. And then I'll have triple speed. So this is a not very long, and then this is about how. Oh yeah, yeah. This this can all work out. This can all work out while I'm eating breakfast. Perfect. Tomorrow morning. Hadrix's first universe.
All right, and for the final act, let's go ahead and just, um, hey, you, you want some my food? I think you do. Here, I'll slather it in mayo for you, just, just because, I don't know. Uh, let me see, who's the second strongest pet? Obviously, it's Pika, so, hey, you. There you go. Mayo now balances your stats perfectly, by the way. Uh, I think I mentioned that. And the rest of you eat that. Yes, yeah, just lots of them. Just, just, just slathered in mayo. There you go. Okay, now we have built an absolutely absurd number of monuments. Just, <laughs> just ridiculous. Okay, create. Whoa, uh, no, 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 not ten. How many do I need? How many do I need? Where are the suns? Eight? Can that be right? Hold on. I need to make five solar systems, which requires 45 suns. Then I can make one galaxy. Right? Yeah. Right, absolutely. Okay. <sighs> then we can put the rest of these guys on to work making upgrades to the TOG over there. I guess I might as well leave them running for these last couple of minutes. Ah. Waited so long. Okay. No. Five. Solar systems. 45 suns? Yes. Four Earth like planets? Definitely. Four. Oh! I need 450. Plus. Doggone it! Mm. Mm. Alright, fine. Whatever. 450. 50 planets, is it? Well, I can do that. I certainly have enough moons kicking around. Fine, whatever. I'll get the, I'll get what I need, I'll get the solar system, and then we'll hit the galaxy, and then we'll upgrade the planet at last. And see the two levels beyond that. And... I don't know. Do I even want to mess around with upgrades? I mean, I've got all this excess divinity I'll have lying around. I might as well use it for something, but... Then again, maybe I just want to rebirth at this point. Maybe I've had enough of this run. Maybe I'm just glad to find... Oh, wait. Oops. Ah, crap. I shouldn't have... I should have put the battle crystal on. Eh, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. I wouldn't have beaten him anyway, and I knew it. <clears throat> nah. We're just gonna... Gonna finish this up. And then... It will be time... We'll push the pea balls a bit further. Then it'll be time to start considering... Doing a bunch of challenges to build my powers up. In different ways. But mostly clones. Oh, crap. I have completely the wrong HUD. Uh, oops. Uh, let me correct that as well. <sighs> All right. We have done it. I'm not waiting 40 minutes to take another take another loss at the hands of P-Ball 10. P-Ball 10 is going to have to contend with some horrifically high stats on the, on the rebirth. Uh, unless I don't feel like making all the crystals and everything's again. Hmm. Maybe I'll just rebirth twice. I don't know. Let's do this. Out of curiosity, I started mucking with the uh, upgrades on this because I have such a massive glut of them. Okay, upgrade! Yes! 
one planet in a million. Legend says he created everything. Not only all of the gods, but also multiple universes. If he created everything, he might be able to also be able to destroy everything. It is said nothing will ever be able to match his power. Can you prove it wrong? Well, why would that be interested in my crystals? Huh? Idling to rule the gods. <laughs> if he created everything, what created him? The answer lies here. Suddenly he stands before you. Forget everything you defeated before. It is there. The one. The only. The last challenge. If you can defeat ITRTG, the button to create a clear data will appear. With this, you can export the clear data to a file and import it into any future games for some extra goodies. Ah, the last boss who wants to steal my crystals. Huh. I was expecting more things to unlock, but I guess I have to beat this to unlock version twos of the others, huh? Huh. Well. Hmm. 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 For our last action. Let me see. No, no, no. We need unequip that and equip one of these. No, not those. This. That's what I meant. Yes. And we go. Hey. You. No, we're going to hit the living sun. Hey, you. Ha. Oh, sorry. Ha. And uses magma cop, magma calypse, magma apocalypse, whatever. That one percent damage to your hit points, not one percent of my hit points. They're close to seven percent. Uses burning hell. Huh, hell is in the sun. Hmm, supernova. Oh, shit. Don't do that. And it looks like it would take me four good thwacks to take out a living sun. Assuming these crystals. Now, before we go rebirthing ourselves. One for each power grade. Two for ultimate crystals. Three for guard crystals. Well, let's see. So. Equip. So this being an eight... This is worth 16, and you're the best I got at a 14. All right, all right. So, I'm just gonna run. Hmm. I'm just going to run a boring old regular rebirth. Why not? Flick, flick, flick. What's going on? I have no strength. Hold on. Uh, monsters. Womp. There. <laughs> All this stuff's in play again. Good, good, good. Now, ahem. Crunch! Holy shit, we're to the pee ball with one flick. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. But we're going to take all of this, and we're going to go down to here. Yes. Yes. Sadly, that's it. You might be wondering why I decided to only do, um, why I decided to do a regular rebirth. It's because this is a very awkward hour for me to be awake at this point. I've stayed up way too late again. And a 24-hour challenge would end up being a 
um, closer to 30 hour pet challenge. So I was just like, you know, I'll just do a regular rebirth. And then as soon as I get this stuff green, I'll start the day pet at a more appropriate hour. Uh, okay, now what I need to do is, of course, the usual put a dump on. Very good. Here you go. You can have all that. What do we got going on over here? Holy crap, we're to Suzaku already? You gotta be kidding. Huh. Okay. Fine. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm off to bed. Ah, you're back down to the very beginning. Tragic. So, anyway, uh, until next time, and every time, when we get to check out more of this story, this is Hadrix, signing off. Bye.